It was an amazing day. My wife and I had taken some of our visiting mainland friends to explore the east side of our beautiful island home. We started our morning at the beach, whale watching and swimming, and we ended our day with a spectacular mountain hike up the Pali. We stopped and got shave ice along the way. The food was great, the fellowship was sweet, the day was so relaxing, and it ended in a most beautiful sunset. I went to bed tired and satisfied, looking forward to a good night's rest, excited for another adventure, this time on the west side. Nothing was out of the ordinary. I expected to wake up as usual to another beautiful Hawaiian day. I had no idea what was coming. At three o'clock that morning, I was rudely awakened by a terrifying scream. There was a loud pounding on my door. The house next door was on fire. And when I rushed out of the house, I was brought face to face with a blazing inferno. It was already as high as our two-story home and it began to reach over our walls. I did my best to protect our home, but my puny garden hose did absolutely nothing. It was good enough to water my mango tree, but it was powerless over this angry conflagration. Five minutes later, and the fire had broken our windows and was spreading in our family home. The home that my beloved grandfather built from the foundation up with his own hands. Had we slept just five minutes longer, perhaps I wouldn't be here to tell the story. I didn't have any time to gather any of my possessions. I only had time to wake up my wife, throw on a shirt and get out. And thank God we all got out. It was a crazy experience. One of the many lessons I learned from this ordeal is that we need to live our lives to the fullest and to live each day as though it's our last and to be ready always to meet death in peace. I've also learned that time flies in a crisis hour. You see, just as I only had a few moments to escape the fiery destruction of our home, so too we in this world only have a little bit of time to prepare for the final destruction of planet Earth. The Bible says that the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he that does God's will will abide forever. But unfortunately, many are indifferent to the crisis hour we're in. Many are sleeping in carnal security, thinking that they're gonna wake up to business as usual. Many are indifferent to the signs of alarm going off all around us. Economic instability, political corruption, moral decay, international unrest, terrorism, and natural disasters increasing in intensity and frequency. All of these are signs that the end is very near. And in these final moments of this earth's history, Jesus is pounding at the door of our hearts. He's trying to wake us up from spiritual sleepiness, and He's pleading with us to get ready for evacuation. You see, friends, we don't have time to be storing up our treasures in a world that will soon be destroyed. We don't have time to waste upon the trivial things of life, things that make no difference in light of eternity. Right now is evacuation time. It is a high time for us to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It is time for us to seek the Lord with all our hearts, time to pray like we've never prayed before, time to gather our loved ones at the altar of sacrifice, time to give our hearts to the only one that can save us when this whole world is on fire. You see, just as I only had time to wake up my wife, put on my shirt and get out of the house, so too we only have time to gather our loved ones and put on the robe of Christ's righteousness and get ready to leave this world of sin. And so today I encourage you to use the last few precious moments in this world to do the most important things in life. Hug your children, kiss your wife, spend time with your family, get rid of all the non-essentials, and most importantly, let God cover you with the fireproof robe of His righteousness. For it is only the righteousness of Christ that will last for time and for all eternity.